Thank you very much, and thank you again to the organizers for uh, having me participate in this wonderful affair. Indira was concerned that my last lectures would be dry, but that will not be the case. <laughs> so um, let's get to it. First, let's talk about um, wall spaces. My, my goal today is to tell you how to get from a group to a cat zero cube complex, and it's really uh, to the, the main theme is going to be uh, Mikha Sagiv's PhD thesis, which has you know been uh, de developed uh, upon a lot in the uh, last 20 years or so. Um, so wall spaces, uh, coincidentally, are a notion that arose uh, in Orsay, I believe, because uh, Frederic uh, Paulin and uh, uh, Fr Frederic Haglund. So a wall space is a set S with a collection uh, script W of walls. Okay. Each wall um, in our collection um, is a partition um, of S into two um, subsets. We normally, we'll, we'll assume that the subsets are disjoint from each other, okay? And uh, um, we will also assume that uh, no, no two walls are the same partition for technical reasons, although a lot of what I'm going to describe has great flexibility to it. You'll see as, as we proceed. So this, this, this definition, which is the most elegant form of the notion of wall space, um, is, is uh, uh, suggestive of uh, you know, qu quite a lot of generalization that will become apparent as we proceed. So we're also going to require that the number of walls separating any two points in S is finite. Okay, so, so this is the number of walls separating P and Q. Okay, a wall separates P and Q if uh, P lies in one of the half spaces of the partition and Q lies in the other half space of the partition. And if you exchange the two parts, if you exchange the two parts. Yes. Is it another wall? It, it, we're, we're, we're not going to. Uh, we're, we're going to assume that uh, um, e each wall is just a uh, is a partition, so it's a it's a collection of two subsets. Okay. So it's the same wall. The order doesn't matter, even though the notation suggests that it does. The order does not matter. It's not fixed, which is left, which is right. No, it's not. It's just a convenience of notation. And our personal name. We'll assume that they're both non-empty, okay? It's, uh, otherwise, it makes a little bit of a mess for certain s subtle points, but don't worry about it. Okay. You missed me on one empty set, by the way, that I was wrong on last time. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, so what's the picture is that the set is, you know, it's a set some object maybe, maybe it has some additional structure to it, some geometry, maybe it's a metric space, who knows, we, we will see. And then a bunch of walls here's a yellow wall, so look I'm, I'm drawing the wall as if it were a wall but we all are, are thinking oh yeah it's dividing it into a left half and a right half or you know a half and another half, never mind the order. Um, and then there are other walls There's a third one. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be so generous with the chalk in the future. Just this one time. Okay. So here's a wall space. It has five walls. Okay. And you know, you. I guess if if, if this really is a, is going to be a partition. 
I suppose we would have to decide the, where the points on the, what, what I'm going to, what I, I tend to call these walls, right? The yellow things, this yellow thing, I tend to call that the wall, right? And you'll see why soon. Um, but if you're being very careful about this definition and, 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 and being faithful to the definition, you have to decide for these yellow points, are they going to be on the, this side or on the, that side? Okay, so let me choose, choose a way. Um, this definition uh, is flexible in that, in that fashion, and it's actually quite a bit, whoa, quite a bit more flexible than, uh, than that. So let's, let's give some examples. So some examples that you're conscious of, perhaps. Um, I mean, that, that was an a perfectly good example over there. But what if we took, if we're being very, very faithful to the definition, and we took the zero, the vertices of a cat zero cube complex, and the, the walls correspond to the pairs of half spaces associated to the hyperplanes, right? So each hyperplane in the cat zero cube complex, when you just consider the vertices of the cat zero cube complex, that hyperplane cuts the vertices into the ones that are on in one of its minor half spaces and the vertices that are in the other minor half space. So the, the hyperplane gives you a wall. Um, I suppose another example that uh, the, the, the two Fredericks uh, were, were motivated by um, was, uh, um, uh, I'll just say, Coxeter group or Coxeter complex and the walls are associated. So that's going to be the, 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 the set S is the Coxeter group, the elements of the Coxeter group. The walls will correspond to uh, the reflection, the reflection walls, right? So each, each reflection, when you have this co co Coxeter complex, each, each reflection, or even if you imagine a, a Coxeter group acting in one of its usual ways, each reflection kind of gives you a wall, okay? And so you can cook up a wall space from that. Um, if we were being really, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, be, I'll be particular about this. Um, so, for instance, um, in a dihedral group of order um, so why should the let's see of order three or six depending on who you are degree three I guess so you can see three walls over here right associated to three reflections, okay? And, you know, I, I personally, I'm not so picky about the idea that the walls should be, should be an actual partition. I'm okay with them being just some, a, a union that adds up, that a, that who's a union that is equal to S, and, you know, I, I allow the, the two half spaces to kind of intersect along what I like to think of as the wall. And that's a, that's a workable definition for what we're going to do, okay? Um, and it's a little bit easier in a way because that way there is a thing that we actually call a wall if you actually manage to get the two half spaces to intersect. But needless to say, over here, in the most elegant version of this definition, um, S would be these six points, right? The, the six vertices, for instance. And we have our three walls. So now we talk about Sagiv's construction. Um, it is going to be a uh, a, a process which uh, um, this is going to be a construction 
which takes as uh, takes input a wall space and gives output a um, cat zero cube complex. Which, which we call the dual to that wall space. So let me describe Sagiv's construction. Um, and uh, really what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be describing the cubes of the cube complex. So the main thing is the idea of a zero cube. That's the hardest thing over here. Um, a zero cube in this output in this dual cube complex, so maybe we let, let me be a little formal here. Okay, a zero cube of this dual cube complex is a choice of half space for each wall. So what do I mean by choosing a half space? Well, if you've got yourself a wall, then you could say, I'm going to choose the left half space for the wall, or you can choose, or you could say, I'm going to choose the right half space for the wall. So you're going to need to choose a half space for each wall. And this choice is going to have to satisfy um, uh, two conditions. The most important one is that uh, such that no two choices, no two chosen half spaces are disjoint. Okay, so what that means is that heuristically this picture is not allowed. Okay, because I've chosen, it's, it's kind of nice, nice little communication device to put, a, to put a little normal vector on your wall to indicate what your chosen half space is. Right? So I've, I'm an, this is going to be a choice for each of these two walls, but it's problematic because the, the, this chosen half space, the yellow chosen half space, and the orange chosen half space are, are disjoint. And the other condition is a little bit, you can ignore it for now, but uh, let me sp spell it out. All but finitely many choices, all but finitely many chosen half spaces contain some particular, and hence any, some uh, fixed point, little s0. Okay, and so the, here let's uh, indicate the, 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 you know, the sort of behavior that we don't, that we don't accept, um, although it can, it can fail in other ways. So here's our, here's our point s0 in our set, the underlying set of the wall space. And then maybe there's a sequence. It doesn't have to look quite like this, but that's the easiest way to get the idea across. This is not allowed. Okay? So these are these are not not allowed. Forbidden. S0 is one, of the, is one of the points, so my set S, probably it has a bunch of points. Right, we, okay, and you just choose some point, it doesn't matter which one, maybe this one. Okay, that's one of the points. And then we require that, well, maybe there's a few of the walls that are, a few of the half spaces in our, in our zero cube, Maybe a few 
of, our, of the half spaces won't contain S0, but almost all of them do. So but the question is quantifier. Do you, do you say there exists S0 such that yes. or so all S0 equals? It, there, there exists for some fixed point. So there, you, you choose S0 ahead of time. Okay, and then, thank you, you choose S0 ahead of time, and then you want, you, 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 and then it's also true because of this requirement over here that it doesn't depend upon your choice. Okay? Okay. Yep, thank you. Okay, yes, please. How does Q correspond to your picture? So it looks like your choice of half spaces, um, infinitely many of them don't contain that first point. Right. So I don't like that. Okay. I, uh, I, like, don't I like to draw the things that, don't, that, that were not, not allowed. Okay, I see. Huh? Yes, yeah, so, and, you, and it, it does, they, they don't have to be in this kind of ascending, uh, a descending chain. They could be, you know, or, or they could be off in, 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 in all sorts of different directions, right? It could have been a forbidden, it could have been a forbidden picture, which, which, uh, which looked like this. Etc. And our point, our point is over here, but there's more and more walls that are. That breaks one as well, right? Yes, it does. That's a great point. Who said that? Okay. So, um, I like this definition because I like it that a zero cube is a lot, has a lot of stuff. So, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a lot of information. Now, we need to say what the one cubes are. We need to say what the one cubes are, and it's actually pretty simple from here. Um, I, I, I should really illustrate this. Let me say what the one cubes are, and then I'm going to illustrate it, excuse me. So, uh, there's going to be a one cube. Um, it's going to join two zero cubes if they differ, if their associated choices differ on exactly one wall. Okay? So um, I'm going to illustrate that in a, in, in, in a second. Um, and then uh, we're, we're, we're basically done. You then, we've, we've built the one skeleton, add, add an n cube for, for larger n whenever uh, you see it's n minus one skeleton is there. Okay, so you so, so you add higher cubes when it, wherever you can. Okay, you know, starting with the squares and then the three cubes and so forth. Okay, so let's let's breathe. <coughs> so it turns out this is going to be cat zero. Um, it's going to be simply connected and non-positively curved. But let's breathe some life into it with, uh, with 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 a few examples. So um, maybe. Maybe the most traditional example is uh, goes back a hundred, few hundred years, maybe 100, 150, something like that. So. Um, this is a situation where no two of the walls cross each other, so to speak. Right? We say the wall, walls, two walls cross if all four possible intersections of their half spaces intersect, have non-empty intersection. Okay. So let me first draw the dual for you. Is there enough contrast between, um, what, do you, what, do, what do you guys like, orange or red? Or orange or red, huh? Huh? I mean, I'm not talking about what you like. What do you see better? Red. Red. Okay. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so this is this this here's my wall space. My walls are are the are the W's, and um, my 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 dual is is this cube complex C. Okay, and let's let's look at one of the zero cubes and try to decide what let, let's let's look at one of the zero cubes um, and. And, and decide what choice of half space it's a, it's a, for each wall it's associated to. Okay, so are you able to see the purple or not? Okay, so that's a nice one. We're simply um, orienting everything towards this point right here. Okay, so it's very easy now to start imagining other zero cubes. And how do you know that, um, how do you know the axioms are satisfied? Well, this is not a concern because any two half spaces contain, contain my, 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 my big point. Right? So we're okay. And this one also. Um, <coughs> let's now, uh, ask ourselves, well, what's the difference between the purple zero cube and the orange zero cube? With the orange zero cube, everything is going to be the same, except for one, one small difference. And the difference is right here. I've, I've taken this half space and I flipped it so that it goes in that direction, right? Okay, and so this, this one cube over here between the purple and orange zero cube is kind of associated specifically to this wall. Okay, so that's a, that's a, so, so now you see a one cube, right? And I, um, well, now you know the one skeleton, right? Although it's going to get more complicated. Um, there weren't any there weren't any uh, um, uh, higher cubes to add, right? Because we don't see there one skeleton. Um, <coughs> it's a tree. It's actually, um, it's not the most con the traditional usage of the word dual, but it's actually dual, right? I think it's, it's dual. There's, here's a slightly more uh, conventional dual, right? That's where, where we're even more familiar with the, with the usage of the term. Um, and Okay, so here again, th these are my walls, and I'm going to draw the dual, and it's actually going to be even more familiar than the case of the tree. In this case, because there's a very simple, there's something very simple about this type of wall space that I've drawn, the each each zero cube is actually going to correspond to um, a, a, a point in the complement of all of the yellow walls. <coughs> all right? And uh, I suppose we should play. We should play the same game. <coughs> let's uh, let's choose. Let's 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 focus on a particular zero cube. Um, <coughs> and it's again the case that 
it's associated to the 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 choice of um, it's associated to the choice where we're directing all the all these normal vectors are t towards that that zero cube. That type of zero cube is called a canonical zero cube. <coughs> so um, <coughs> and then you know if we flipped it over to this orange one, you know you know what the change is going to be. It's just that change right over there. So I'll just put the change that way. And if we flipped it to this uh, green one, let it be, then there'd be this change here. Right, green is not so, not so good. Let's see what this does. But to check the dose of the only zero cubes, it's, of course, it's a finite problem, but is there a way to do it without going over other possibilities? I, uh, what, what do you, what, I don't know what that means. So, so you define what the zero cube is yes. in terms of a choice of half spaces. So you have some evident zero cubes correspond to the points you've drawn. So maybe there's a surprise zero cube yeah. that we didn't see. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that. We're going to do that. So let's, maybe I should move forward. So, um, in, in a way, all, all this picture is exhibiting. It's, you know, you're looking and you're seeing that if you, you, can, you can flip this one, you can flip that one. If you flip them both, you get here. Right? You get to this white zero cube. If you flip, if you flip, the, if, if you flip this one, maybe the white one's more interesting. If you flip that wall and you also flip this wall. Right? And you leave all the, all the other walls just like the purple zero cube wanted. Then you get this zero cube. Okay, so we need to do more exciting example. So I'm going to do that, <coughs> right? Because otherwise this isn't so interesting. Because it's just like something that we all know about. We learned about when we were, you know, when, when we were in high school, I guess, right? These little dual pictures. Yeah. So, so what's a more interesting example? Okay, so we already know the game. And we know about these canonical zero cubes, right, where, where, you just where you just orient all the walls towards some point, and that's going to satisfy the axioms. And we found seven. We found seven, and maybe, maybe it's a good idea just this one time to... Um, uh, to to do this. And what I'm going to do is let's call our walls um, the uh, the first, second, and third walls. And actually, let's direct them. Let's make the make this choice so that we're starting at this zero cube right over here. Okay, that's going to be our sort of neutral choice. And now let's, let's name all of the other zero cubes, right? Because we can make a little naming system now. Um, I suppose uh, um, maybe we'll, we'll, uh, you'll forgive me for calling neutral one. And let's, let's, name, let's name them uh, one, one, one. That's all, all of these, and, 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 and forgive me for, for, for the number one being that. That just means neutral. So one, 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 one and uh, l let, me, let me proceed. Uh, one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, 
one zero one zero zero one zero one one zero one zero right so so zero one zero that's this that's this guy right over here right that's zero one zero and why is it called zero one zero because um, we've flipped the we flipped the first wall we kept the second wall in the in, 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 in its new, in its original position so it hasn't changed and we've flipped the third wall right so so um, right so we you, you got from one 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 to zero one zero by flipping two walls agreed now what about <coughs> Then, so, so now we see that there's another zero cube that we left out before, right? And that's, that's zero, zero, zero. We like zero. So, so that's the, the type of zero cube, a sort of secret, secret zero cube that was hidden. Um, and, uh, well, that, that corresponds to, um, that, that corresponds, it's this orange cube. It, it, it corresponds to reversing all three of these. And you look at these three orange chosen half spaces and you see that their, <coughs> their, their triple intersection is empty. So the zero, zero, zero cube is, is not a, what I call the canonical cube. So, excuse me? Versus? Canonical zero cube. Thank you. Okay, I, I, I said what a, what a canonical zero cube was. Sh shall I, sh should I say it? Shall I say it again? I'll, I'll put it over here. So, um, but it really belongs right after we defined what a zero cube and a one cube was and we said what the cube complex was. It's an observation that uh, um, zero cubes exist in the dual. Um, just orient all half spaces, orient all walls towards a point of S. And you'll get Let's name that point, little s. Uh, obtain a canonical zero cube CS. What, what, what was your question? Well, no, it's again a trivial thing. If s is empty, there is no such canonical. If s is empty, there's no. There's no okay. Good. <laughs> okay, you're fun. So. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the, the truth is, the truth is, I'll tell, give you a private confession now. Um, I too love the empty set, and I normally don't even, um, I, 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 it was just as a public service that I told you about the set S, because I, I, I only imagine the walls, right? And so I got a bunch of walls, and you know, you can wonder what, what, the, what they mean even, but never bothered me and and then I just make sure that I don't have two walls pointing away from each other and I don't have mm -hmm. you know certain certain terrible things actually the second type of terrible thing doesn't bother me very much either because it's really some it's something at infinity which I'm actually quite happy with and uh, points points in S I, I never give them much consideration okay hmm. all right so Oh my goodness, I'm super duper slow today. <coughs> um, <coughs> exercises, well, we start at 9.15? Yep. <laughs> All right, time flies when you're having fun. So um, let's, uh, Let's just call it an exercise that C is non-positively curved and C is 
simply connected. Both of these are actually easy. One of them I even put in the exercises, even though I'm sure it's one of the ones that you're not going to get up to because I put too many. And let's move forward. Um, let's discuss the notion of a co-dimension one subgroup. So, um, Mm. Uh, I guess let me sort of invite you to exercises. So one of the things that I will ask in the in in, in the in, in in our exercises is you know to compute the dual to a system of n families of parallel walls in R2, for example. So you can have some orange ones, some red ones, right? And I'm, I'm imagining that, the, that each of these families is infinite. So you get some nice wall space like this, right? And I, well, I want you to figure, figure out exactly what the, the dual cube complex looks like. You will be able to, okay? Um, let's now talk about co-dimension one subgroups. Question. Yes? In the first two pictures, have you, have you, have you actually drawn all of the characters? There are no non-canonical zero cubes. In the first two pictures, there are no non-canonical zero cubes. So, um, uh, exercise when um, when uh, um, W does not have uh, um, three pairwise crossing walls there are no non-canonical yuck every zero cube it is is canonical Thank you. Where were you when I was writing, making my exercises? Huh? That's, that's good. So, and, that, and that's very well, uh, very well observed, and that somehow things get interesting as soon as, you know, as, as soon as you have a bit of a mess, right? And it's, it's exciting because there's a, we love dual, because a dual means a secret, right? That there's a secret, and then we feel that we're in the game and other people don't know. So, um, if the secret gets exciting as soon as you're starting off with a wall space that seems kind of tame and you look at, and there's a duel and the duel is something gargantuan, something maybe could be infinite dimensional and, you know, uh, with, with a very, very rich um, uh, uh, lo local, lo local uh, uh, um, complex, you know, complexity. So, um, and that, that's actually what happens. So let's, let's see where these come from. So I'm going to talk now about co-dimension one subgroups. Let G be a finitely generated group with Cayley graph epsilon a subgroup H of G is co-dimension one if there exists R more than zero such that the Cayley graph minus the R neighborhood of the subgroup, right, which is just a subset of the vertices of the Cayley graph, has at least two h orbits
of components um, K that are deep in the sense that K is, con is, is, uh, um, K is not contained, uh-oh, in any finite neighborhood of H. Okay, I need to, it's a little bit of a mouthful. So, um, what you should be, um, well, let me, let me spell out examples before we try to uh, express the definition in a little more, bit more humane form, because really we should be giving a, an incorrect definition, which is more, more humane, and then, then we'll, 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 we'll think about it a little more carefully. Um, but just an example quickly to have in mind, um, any, Z, any copy of Zn in Zn plus 1 is co-dimension 1. Um, any cyclic subgroup in the fundamental group of a surface, of an orientable surface, is co-dimension 1, right? So this is sort of suggesting the, 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 the terminology. Um, what's the picture? Well, the, um, uh, let's first uh, um, look at a very uh, explicit example, right, of, of z inside of z squared. So here's the Cayley graph of z squared, and here's a um, here's a uh, like orange, like red. Here's a cyclic subgroup, maybe a nice diagonal cyclic subgroup. And the first part of this definition is well, the subgroup should cut the Cayley graph in half, right? It should, it should cut the Cayley graph. It should coarsely cut it. We want the Cayley graph minus the neighborhood of the subgroup should, should have more than one component. That's the first thing that we want, okay? So, well, um, I, I guess it already cut it right now. Maybe this, maybe this wasn't uh, an, exciting, uh, an exciting example. Maybe I'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll leave it as it is. Uh, uh, I'll change it. Here, here. Now I, I, I chose a slightly, I chose an index two subgroup of the one that I had before. Okay, so now um, uh, my subgroup does not quite cut the Cayley graph into two. When you remove the subgroup from the Cayley graph, it doesn't cut it because you can you can sort of still travel travel through, right? There's a little gap over here, but you could take a neighborhood. Right, and so is it a closed neighborhood or an open neighborhood? It doesn't really matter. The definitions don't really matter. You can let's assume it's it's a um, it's a closed neighborhood, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and let's take a, uh, a, a a two neighborhood. Let's take a two neighborhood of this subgroup. What does it look like? One two, one two, one two. I think that's that's what it looks like. Right and, and now um, uh, um, as as you can see this this yellow this yellow neighborhood of my of my subgroup here's my subgroup 
Right? So I have, I have the Cayley graph, uh, um, the Cayley graph of the group. I have my subgroup. I have the what uh, two neighborhood of the subgroup. Okay, and it it cuts that yellow neighborhood cuts the Cayley graph into two. In, it cuts it into two, two components, but we, we, want, we want those components, um, there's two things that we want to say about the components. One is that we want those components to be um, deep, right? We, 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 we don't want, we, we, we want those components not to, to be non-trivial, to be sort of impressive. So the, the, the way to state that is to say that, um, th that, they're, that they get very, very far from, from the subgroup. And that's the case over here. Okay, so these, these components are deep. The two white components that you see are, are, are they're deep. They go far from the, from the subgroup. And the other thing that you see is that um, it is, is, this is a little more subtle, has at least two h orbits of components. Right? So actually when you look at how the, the subgroup is acting on this situation over here, it's it's quite nice. It it's um, it it keeps it. Th there's actually only two h orbits. In fact, right? This the, the top white component and the and the and the bottom white component don't get exchanged by the action of the subgroup. Now, if this had been maybe a, a Klein bottle, right? This could have been the Cayley graph of a Klein bottle, for example, of a Klein bottle group, and maybe the subgroup might have been acting by a glide reflection. Then how many then how many h orbits would there be then, right? If h were a were a glide reflection, there'd only be one, and it wouldn't count as a co-dimension one subgroup. Okay, so those are those are, and if you look in the literature, you'll see people make mistakes about that. Myself as well, many times, especially in the early literature on the on, on, on this topic. I mean, so the notion of co-dimension one subgroup is a very is a, is, is a very old uh, uh, notion, uh, but it kind of became became really very important after Sagib's uh, work. So let's let's uh, um, let's let's see how this is now related to um, uh, to wall spaces. Oh, oh, I should I should say this. Here's a an alternate and elegant uh, 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 um, alternate uh, definition of codimension one is the following comes from the following. So um, uh, H is co-dimension one if and only if, um, so this is a, G is this finitely generated group with Cayley graph epsilon, H is co-dimension one if and only if the coset diagram, the coset graph, which people sometimes call it the Schreier graph, has more than one End. Okay, so um, the if you have a graph, if you have a graph, The number of ends of the graph, right, or have, ha, ha, um, the, uh, ha having uh, uh, more than one end means that you can uh, you can remove a compact compact you can remove a compact uh, subgraph and get and, and get several uh, um, in infinite uh, components that are um, uh, and, and, and get several in, in, and get more than one uh, component which is which is deep in the sense that it's far from this compact subset okay so there's a way of defining the number of ends I mean that th this is this is going to be this this graph will have three three ends um, this graph over here a kind of train track will have two ends right because you kind of Cutting just this one point doesn't do anything, but cutting a little more, you've got two ends over there, and so forth. On the other hand, this, this Cayley graph over here um, 
uh, only has one end because no matter what compact subgraph you remove, there'll only be one infinite, so if it's a locally finite graph, let's just stick to locally finite graph, there'll only be one infinite complementary component when you remove a compact subset. Okay, so the number of ends is, 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 is the um, uh, uh, ma maximal number or in, in, um, uh, su su uh, the, 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 the largest number allowing infinity um, or, or, the, or the limit of the, uh, the supremum of the number of, uh, comp in, of, of, of infinite complementary components as you remove larger and larger compact sets. So you, you can have uncountably many ends if it, you define the space of n as the inverse limit. Yes. Then if they are all finite, but in some cases you could get like a central set of ends. Uh, um, well, okay, I don't, I, um, I don't want to stop and think about that. So I think I'm, I, uh, I think I'm going to continue, and then I'll talk to you about it. If, uh, I'd love to talk to you about it afterwards. Okay? So, um, so what happens, uh, what, what, you know, to think about this lemma, what's happening actually is that um, the, the, the neighborhood, when you, when you think about what, how to, what's going on with that lemma, the, the neighborhood that you're removing, the neighborhood of the subgroup that you're removing, is, is, is going to correspond to this compact set that you're removing in the, in, in the coset diagram. Right? This is the graph that we're interested in. We want to say that it has more than one end. So the neighborhood, that, the, the neighborhood that you're removing, the neighborhood of your subgroup that you're removing, is this compact set that, that you're, 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 you're removing from the coset diagram. And you, know, you want to have at least at, at least two in, uh, comp in infinite complementary components, well, that they're going to, uh, um, well, the, 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 the complementary components are going to correspond to the h orbits. The, the, the complementary components in, over here in the coset diagram are going to correspond to the, to the h orbits of, 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 uh, of, of deep components that we're interested in. Okay, that's the sort of connection to this lemma, and I think it's a much, it's a much more elegant uh, um, uh, way of stating it. Uh, but maybe not, not always the way we think about it. So um, let's now uh, c conclude this by, um, by explaining the, uh, good work. <laughs> let, let, let's, let's now um, explain how we're going to get from a co-dimension one subgroup to a wall space, right? We already know how to get from a wall space to a cat zero cube complex, right? We, we, we've discussed the co-dimension one subgroup. Let's, let's, let's talk about how to get from a, from a co-dimension one subgroup, sub, subgroup to a wall space. Um, so what did Sagiv do is um, he, uh, um, the co-dimension one subgroup so here's 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 his construction let let h be co-dimension one subgroup choose r um, such that the r neighborhood of h has um, has at least two uh, h orbits of deep components. So in particular, it has some deep component k, and then let w be the wall where one part is k, and the other part is its complement. And then let, I'll draw you a picture of all this in a second, let our collection of walls just be the set of all translates of these partitions. Okay, and so we obtain, so this is going to give us a wall space on G, right? So S is going to be 
the is going to be g. That's just the. Well, I guess you could let s be uh, um, the Cayley graph if you'd like as well. That's fine. Um, this yields a wall space with a g action. So not only do you get um, so what will happen then is that you obtain a dual with an action by your group. Okay, so this is this is the game. Um, so the picture is the following, very simple picture. Here's our Cayley graph and And here's our subgroup. And it has a little neighborhood. This little neighborhood, which is which is um, which is cutting our Cayley graph up in an interesting, in a, in a in an essential way. And then well, we know that there's lurking over here, there's a, a way of deciding, right, just um, maybe choose k to be one of these, um, ch choose k to be uh, um, one of the, co of the deep components. There's, this, there's a lot of leeway when you're playing the game over here. k would be one of these, and then the complement of k, so that's going to be left w and then the complement of k if you're being very particular about this might be this might be right w over there right so that's the complement of k and then if you coarsify your vision and you're not so particular about this then you 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 might oh uh, you, you, you 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 might just say okay i got this wall over here right and there's this side and that side, that's my wall, right? And, and then when you take that wall in the Cayley graph, right, so I'm just looking at it in a kind of more summary heuristic fashion, and when I take that wall and I, and, and I translate it around by the group action, right, that's that entire, you know, collection of translates of that wall, so there's going to be this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, those are just tr translates, and, well, probably, probably uh, translates of this wall are going to cross itself, right? So when you translate this wall, whoa, it, maybe it crosses itself. So you might get that one and phew, that one over there and this one and so forth, right? And now you have a whole bunch of walls, right? And, and the, um, the group is acting, permuting these walls around. And so the, the, the dual... The, the dual cube complex, which we now uh, we, we, we now know how to um, how to define, we we're already prepared for that. The, you know, um, is 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 likewise going to get um, <coughs> acted on. And I, I think I switched my conventions, but but there's this dual cube complex. Right, it's a very concrete example of here. It looks like everything is canonical, um, but that's not, it's, it's not usually so simple, but that's okay. It, it, it isn't really such a big deal either way. Well, this, this cube complex C is our goal, and the action of the group on the wall space gives you an action of, of the group on, on C. Okay, so G acts on C. All right. Well, of course, this, this construction works with several co-dimension one subgroups, and and many many things uh, many things about. Uh, um, uh, the, the, the setup can be flexed a little bit, 
Um, the one thing that you might uh, uh, consider, it's an interesting exercise, you know, um, why is Why is the number of po points separated by walls finite? Right? So you kind of try kind of imagine your points. Right? And it's it's pretty convincing that uh, that there'll be finitely many walls that separate P and Q because there'll be there'll be finitely many there'll actually be fi finally many walls whose yellow whose yellow neighborhoods even intersect this white, th this white arc, this white geodesic. Okay, so that's more or less um, that's more or less the, the reason. Um, the we, we another thing to note, and then I'll I think I'll I, th I think I'll stop there, is is that uh, as you can sh maybe guess from the construction, the stabilizers. Of hyperplanes um, of the dual cube complex are are pretty much they end up being commensurable with. Um, uh, conjugates of our co-dimensions one subgroup H. Okay, so I'll, I'll stop now and uh, I have to stop. Sorry. Yeah.